we're in our final three weeks of our journey together, digging deeper into the experiences of prayer. In these last three sessions, we're exploring three exemplary prayers that avoid the perils and experiences the promises of prayer. This work, we're experiencing a, a rather famous, well-known prayer. It's the prayer of St. Francis, which is found again in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 481. Now, St. Francis was a spiritual leader in the late Middle Ages. The Franciscan order uh, in the Roman Catholic Church is named after St. Francis of Assisi and still exists today. The purpose of the Franciscan order is to sustain his understanding of spiritual maturity for the Christian community. Just a little interesting rabbit to chase. Historians point out that the present form of this prayer was probably written no earlier than the 19th century. That's the the earliest renditions of this prayer as we know it today. However, key phrases were written by St. Francis and the prayer certainly represents his understanding of spiritual maturity. This is the prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we're born to eternal life. Now, this prayer certainly avoids the perils of prayer. It's not a cop-out <laughs> for serving others. It directs the prayer to serve. It's not a badge to be worn, for the prayer is known for a life of giving, lived for the other, rather than for oneself. It's not a tool to be justified by works. Rather, it is the consequence of being justified by faith. In this prayer, we also experience the promise of prayer, of human community, of connection with the divine and change in the life of the prayer. The first section of this prayer is, is for me an artist's portrayal of a follower of Jesus. Um, this person of faith, according to this prayer of St. Francis, um, is, is portrayed as a sower of seeds, spreading uh, the seeds of good tidings, of love, of pardon, of faith, hope, light, and joy to those who are in need. St. Francis is remembered as a servant who lived as though he was a modern forest ranger on the lookout tower, ready to respond to any puff of smoke on the horizon the smoke that St. Francis was looking for was the experience of hatred, injury, doubt, despair, darkness, or sadness. And wherever there was a puff of smoke of any of those, 
There St. Francis was called to serve. Karen and I had the privilege of receiving Mary as a gift in our lives when we were parents of three young sons. Mary was known in the community as as a person who extended herself for others um, to serve anyone in the community, the young, the elderly, the excluded, the included, the believer, the unbeliever. It didn't make any difference to Mary. She was the local grandmother of our three sons. And Mary had the uncanny knack. She was always being, she was at the right place at the right time. And she was there to sow the seeds of grace, love, and truth. She was the sower of seeds. Um, looking back on the life of Mary, it's clear that she embodied the prayer of St. Francis, for she was always on the lookout. It was as if she lived on a tower, able to see the first puff of smoke indicating any need in Ransom, Kansas. If you didn't know Mary, she might have fit the profile of being Snoopy and a gossip. For when she saw the sheriff make the turn late one evening into the drive of the Nair family home, she called me and shared that I might want to respond. Mary's husband didn't even know that she had called me. I went to the Nair home, saw the sheriff's call, and spent that night with the family. But finally the word came with the message for certain that their son had been killed in an oil field accident. I tell that story because Mary saw the smoke. For the next days, weeks, and years, Mary, through others, sowed the seeds of love, healing, support, care to a family that experienced injury, sadness, darkness, despair. She saw a puff of smoke on the horizon. She knew that family. She knew the sheriff would not arrive in the evening for any routine contact. She was St. Francis in that small western Kansas community, always on the lookout, ready and willing to sow the seeds of God's grace. You see, this prayer of St. Francis is best represented today in our world in the life of a man who, when he was elected Pope of the Roman Catholic family of faith, chose to be Pope Francis. This servant leadership, Pope Francis, He's always on the lookout, ready and willing to sow the seeds of God's grace to those who have been injured, especially those who have been injured by the church, to those who have been dehumanized, especially those who have been dehumanized by the church, others who have judged to be unworthy, even by his church. You see, whenever Pope Francis sees a puff of smoke of injustice, lack of mercy or pride, he sows the seeds of good tidings and great joy. That man is a servant leader. 
the St. Francis of our day, always on the lookout. And that is the call of the prayer of St. Francis to you and to me, to be on the lookout and respond in servanthood, empathy, care, humility, and love. Yep, I really believe the prayer of St. Francis is an exemplary prayer intended to align with the divine. For your thought and conversation, who are those in your life that are always on the lookout to see the puffs of smoke indicating human need? And who are those today who are sowing seeds of God's grace in a divided culture dominated by despair? I hope you're enjoying the journey of digging deeper into the experience of prayer. Thank you.